As we have seen in our recent Sunday school lessons, we should be living to inherit the kingdom of God. In order for us to live in the proper manner to inherit the kingdom of God, we must live in a Christ-like manner. Now, in striving to live in a Christ-like manner, we must admit that nobody is perfect. None of us are perfect. But thankfully, in our imperfections, God, he is holy and he is righteous. He is love. And in his love, there is forgiveness, where we are forgiven of our trespasses that we commit against him. Now, in that love that is shown to us, in that we are living in the grace of God, how do you think that we should live amongst all of those that are around us? What should we do with the love that God has shown to us? In our lesson this week, we see that we should extend that love. We see this as our lesson opens today with Peter asking Jesus a question about forgiveness. Peter was curious if he would be doing right by others by forgiving them up to seven times if they had done him wrongly. Peter thought that he was being very generous by offering to forgive those that do him wrongly by forgiving them up to seven times. The reason that he thought that way was because he was brought up he was raised that God, he forgives sins, but he forgives sins proportionally. He forgives sins three times per each sin. Now imagine that. Imagine God forgiving sins proportionally in that manner. If God forgave all of our sins at least three times per sin, I tell you, we will be in a world of trouble. To set Peter on the right track, Jesus told Peter to multiply seven times 70. In other words, Jesus was telling Peter to be even more liberal in forgiving others. Now, don't take that number 70 times 7, which is 490. Don't take that number literally, meaning that you should forgive somebody only 490 times. That's not how Jesus wants you to think about forgiveness. Think of forgiveness in this manner. Think of forgiving someone 490 times a day or 490 times a week or 490 times a month or a year maybe, that would be a lot of forgiving. That would be forgiving liberally, which is how we should move. We should move to forgive one another liberally. If those who come to you, if they repent of the wrong that they have done to you, you should be willing to forgive them of the wrong that they have done. Now, we'll see that Jesus, he explains this thought through the parable here of the merciless, the unforgiving servant. Jesus, who we see there in the 23rd and in the 24th verse, said that the kingdom of heaven was like a certain king that wanted to settle accounts with his servants. The certain king, of course, represents the Lord and the servants are representative of believers. Jesus, he tells us that when the certain king began to settle accounts, there was one servant that owed 10,000 talents. A talent was a measure to weigh metals or gold in that day. So if you try to equate how much money that this servant was in debt to the king with 10,000 talents of gold or 10,000 talents of metals, the amount of debt that the servant owed that certain king was insurmountable. It was a great amount of debt that this servant was in to the certain king. So the certain king, we'll see, was going to sell the servant, his wife, and his children, along with everything he had in order to have that debt settled. Now, of course, the servant, he wouldn't want this to happen. And we see him literally plead for the king to be patient with him. That is, he was pleading for the king to be merciful. So in the 27th verse, we will see that the king was compassionate. He was compassionate towards the servant, and released him from his debt. The servant, in other words, was forgiven of the debt that he owed. There is an insurmountable debt that all of us owe to the Lord. You may be wondering why is that? Well, think about this for a moment. All of us, we have sinned. We have sinned and sinned and sinned against the Lord. We have trespassed against him greatly. 
And because we would not give up our lives to find forgiveness in the eyes of God, God, he gave us his only begotten son who gave his life for us. Jesus, he is our perpetuation. We have found atonement in the eyes of God through our faith in the only begotten son of God. Our sins, they are washed away. We find forgiveness in the eyes of God. God, he was compassionate towards us. He did not have to give us his only begotten son. But again, God, he loves us. He sympathizes with all that we go through. And in his compassions, we find mercy in his eyes. Through our faith again, we are forgiven of our sins. Now take a look at the 28th verse. Look at how the servant went out and then acted after having been shown mercy, after having been forgiven from the king. This verse, scripture tells us that the servant went out, found another servant, found a fellow servant that was in debt to him 100 denarii, and look at how he treated the servant. He took him, we are told, by the throat and said he was owed money. The depth of 100 denarii is nothing, especially in comparison to the fact that the servant owed the certain king over 10,000 talents of metals or golds. So with that in mind, how do you think that this servant should go about treating his fellow servant here who is now in debt to him? We would think that he would go about being compassionate as the king was towards him. We would think that he would go about being forgiving as the certain king was towards him, right? Now this other servant will see pleaded for mercy. But the servant that we have been looking at this whole time that had received mercy from the certain king, that was forgiven by the certain king, we'll see that he couldn't even be patient with his fellow servant we'll see that he was merciless, that he was unforgiven. He took his fellow servant and threw him into prison to pay off his debt. So how do you think the king would feel if he had been there to see the servant that he had just shown compassion and forgiveness and mercy to? How do you think that king would feel to see that man moving in such a merciless manner? Since this is a parable, how do you think God would feel how do you think God feels when he looks at his children and he see his children not moving in a manner of love, to see his children be apathetic, to see his children to be so bitter in their hearts when they should be moving out of the same compassions that he has moved with towards us, when they should be, when we should be moving in the same manner of grace and love that the Lord has shown to us. Now we'll see there in scripture that there was a servant that seen all of this happen, that was watching how that servant, that merciless and unforgiving servant had treated his fellow servant. And so we'll see that after being told by that servant who saw the actions of the merciless and the unforgiving servant, we'll see that the king was furious. The servant came before the king, we're told, and the king let him have it. The king called that servant, called him a wicked servant. So the king isn't happy, is he? Why do you suppose that this certain king wasn't happy about what he had just heard? As you may have figured, it was because he had shown the servant mercy and forgave him. We'll see the king said to the servant, I forgave you all that dealt because you begged me. And then we'll see that the king asked, should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? Well, the answer is obviously a yes. We know what the Lord has done for us as sincere believers. We know the love that we have received from God. We know that we should treat all of those that are around us with the same manner of love. So the question that we must ask and then answer ourselves is this, what is stopping us? What is preventing us from loving all of those with the same manner of love that God has shown to us. As I preached a few weeks ago, we cannot be a loveless church. We cannot be a bitter church. We cannot be an apathetic church. So we'll see there in the 34th and in the 35th verse, we'll see that as the merciless servant had thrown the one in debt to him in prison to work off his debt, the king delivered this merciless servant, delivered this unforgiving servant to torturers until he was able to pay off his debt, which was very great. 
Jesus, he then said, So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So do you see why it is so important for us to extend the love, the grace that God has shown to us, to all of those that are around us? Do you see why the Lord tells us over and over and over again throughout scripture to love our neighbors as we love ourselves? When we can do this, when we can love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we can strive in a manner to in which we will inherit the kingdom of God. When we can love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we can grow. We can grow as a people collectively together and then ourselves individually, we can grow and we can become a better person as well. So what we should take away from this lesson today is extend the love that God has shown to you. We as a church, we collectively as believers, we have been loved by the Lord. We live under grace, his grace, and we should extend that love. We should extend his mercy, his compassions, learning to be sympathetic to the plight of all of those that are around us. We can learn to grow in this manner. And then all of us, we can grow to be better people.